Pamela was nine. She was extremely psychotic. You like my shirt there? What is that? Is that my stomach? The speech was entirely echolalic. She showed no interest in her environment, but repeated over and over the bizarre behavior so characteristic of autism. Ricky was seven and rejected our attempts to show him affection. Like Pam, he was a Kaleli. What's your name? What's your name? How old are you, Ricky? Billy got no comfort from people. He actively fought them off. He was six and he had never talked. Billy had violent tantrums and often injured himself. Like Billy, Chuck was mute. At the age of six, he still didn't know how to play. He spent most of his time rocking. Hug, hug, yeah. These children were so unresponsive to people, we couldn't use social or verbal approval as a reward. But since they were all good eaters, we could use the primary reward of food. Hug, hug. Starting at the simplest level, we had to teach them to play with each other, to respond to affection, and how to talk. The job became one of creating a total environment in which the children could learn. In this film, we will consider only the program for teaching the children to speak. However, that program demonstrates quite well how the principles of learning can be applied in the teaching of new behaviors. We proceed to teach language in a step-by-step -step fashion. First, we ask the children to imitate sounds which others make. Then we teach them to call objects by name, then to ask for things, and gradually then in a step-by-step -step manner, we approach uh, the teaching of conversational speech. Mmm, mmm. Chucky couldn't imitate the sound mmm, so we had to help him. We did this by closing his lips. Good, Chucky. Just as soon as he showed the desired behavior, he got his reward. It is crucial to give the reward immediately. Mmm. Notice that we help him less now. The hand is only on his chin. Good. Good, Chucky. That's good. Good. Good boy. Mmm. We don't close his lips anymore. We always remove our direct help as soon as possible. When the child behaves on his own, he learns the most. Chucky? Be! Be! That wasn't close enough. If we had rewarded him that time, we would have taught him the wrong thing. We will try again and see if we can't get a closer approximation. There. Chucky. Chucky, look at my mouth. My mouth. There. That's right. I want to look at my mouth. Okay. There. That's right. There. was close enough, so we rewarded him this time. Good, that's pretty good. Mama. Mama. Mama, Chucky. Mama. See how inconsistent Chuck's performance is. Behavior you have just started to build will be weak. And you should expect many errors in the beginning. Mama. No. Mama. Good, Mama. Good. Good boy. That's good talking. That's very good. 
Bill E. Bill E. Bill E. No, look at me, Billy. Look. Bill E. Bill E. No, Billy. No, Bill. Look at me, Billy. Billy? The word Billy was too difficult to get. When any behavior is too complex, we have to break it down into its parts and put it back together later on. Let's do this. of training, imitative behavior becomes strong and more consistent. cannot yet describe the world which they are beginning to enjoy, but they have to learn to tell us about that world. So our next step is to teach them what things are called. What is it, Chucky? Yeah. them to ask for what they want. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, what do you want? Uh, I? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, 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 <laughs> okay, now what do you want? All right. That was good talking. <laughs> you want me to take it? Okay. Okay. On your mark? Go. Pamela, what's your name? What's your name? What's my name? Pam and Ricky were echolalic. They already imitated, but far too much. So our first step with them is to teach them when not to imitate or echo by ignoring or disapproving of this incorrect behavior. At the same time, we teach them to answer correctly, for example, by telling us their name. Look at me, Pamela. What's your name? No. Pamela. Pamela. Yeah. What's your name? Pamela. Good. What's your name? What's your name? Pat. 
Pamela? Pamela? Right. What's your name? Pamela? Yeah. What's your name? What's your name? No. Uh-uh. What's your name? No. Pamela. What's your name? What's your name? Good. What's your name? Richard. Good. What's your name? Richard. What's my name? Mine. No, Dr. Lubert. Mine, Mark, no. Dr. What's my name? Mine. Ricky, look at me. That's right. What color is that? Pamela has already learned to identify colors, in this case, yellow. But here she manifests once oh, again her bizarre symptoms. What color is this? What color is this hand? What color is this? Look at the hand, Dan. What color is this? What color is it, Dan? What color is it, Dan? Look at the crayon. What color is it, Dan? If further learning is to take place, we cannot permit this behavior to continue. What color is it? You tell. Look at it. What color is it? Yellow. Very good, Pam. What color is that, Pam? Yellow. What color is this, Pam? Yellow. Very good. Pamela, Pamela, put the block on top of the box. We have to teach them things other than the names of objects. They have to learn the meaning of relational terms, for example, on top of, beside, and inside. Put the block beside the box. See? Beside the box. Put the block beside the box. No, Pamela. Put the block, look at the block. Pamela, Pam, look at the block. Put the block on top of the box. See? Look at the block. Okay. Now you do it, Pamela. Pamela, stop it! Pick up the block and put it on top of the box. On top. Good. What am I wearing, Pamela? What am I wearing? They have to learn the meaning of I, you, and he, and what is mine, yours, and his. That's right. Good girl. Pamela, who is wearing the red shoes? I am. That's right. What are you wearing, Nikki? I'm wearing clothes. What clothes? What kind of clothes? Hmm? Blue shirt. Yeah. Blue pants. Yeah. Soft. Hmm? Tiny shoes. Black and white tiny shoes. That's right. That's right. That's right. And well, who sleeps in Ricky's bed? Ricky does. That's right. Good girl. Who comes to see you on Tuesday and Thursday? Mommy and Daddy. That's right. Tell me about breakfast, Sam. I have toast and jelly. What else, Sam? They have to learn to remember and tell us what they remember. Ketchup. Good. Why don't you put ketchup on? My eggs. Eggs. Good girl. Hello, Pamela. Hello, Mrs. Dilma. How are you, Pamela? Hello, Mrs. Dilma. I'm fine. That's very good, Pamela. The children understand some words now, and so we start to teach them to converse with us. Notice the mechanical, robot-like quality of these early conversations. Also notice that we have made it easy enough for them to be rewarded. Yes, I am, Pamela. Ricky, what's your name? Ricky, that's good. Mommy, what's your name? Oh, that's good, Ricky. Good. Where do you go to school? Yes, I will. That's good. Ask me where I go to school. Say where? Well, they go to school. UCLA. That's good, Ricky. Very good. That's good. Read this to the research. Now that the children know what some words mean, they can be taught to answer factual questions. Here, Ricky looks forward to giving the right answer. We don't have to use food as a reward anymore. Our approval has become important to the children. On the chair. Are you standing on the chair? Yes. That's good. Are you sitting? Are you sitting on the chair? No. Are you standing beside the chair? No. Are you standing on top of the dresser? No. Are you standing on top of the chair? Yes! Good boy! <laughs> Ask me some questions. Where do I sit? Louder, Pamela. Where do I sit? That's a circle, Pamela. What color is this? 
That's a red circle. Very good, Pam. That's a good girl, Pam. That's very good. Look at me. That's a smart girl. Do you see? I see some questions about the same. Oh, Pam, what is it? Yes, Pam. Yes, Pam. Yes, Pam. Yes, Pam. Yes, Pam. After a while, asking questions becomes fairly easy. Yes. It's just a closet. Yes. It's just a dresser. Yes. It's just a dresser. Yes. That's good. It's just a closet. Yes. It's just a blanket. Yes. It's just a closet. It's just a closet. That's good. It's just a dog. Yeah. Slippers. It's just a mother. Yes. It's just a dresser. It's just a bucket. Yes. It's just a towel. Yes. Good boy. That's good. I love you tons and tons. Now that many of the parts of speech are there, the children can begin to talk with us and tell us what they experience. Look at his class. Look at his class. Look at his class. Go the railroad class. That's right. What else did the train say? Choo choo. <laughs> That's right.